So I got a phone call that my mother was in a hospital unconscious. She was assaulted by a man that was my age, six foot three, my height, and about 240 pounds, my size. At first, when I got the phone call, the first thing that went through my mind was revenge. But thankfully, I learned on how to master my emotions. And today, I'm gonna be bringing you through exactly how to master your emotions and the three things that you must do each and every time along with one main thing that you have to be able to understand that no YouTube video right now is actually talking about. The first thing that I had to do when I got that phone call was in fact really pace around my room because at first I wanted to react. And that's what happens with all of us when we have these emotions. But the first thing you actually have to do, I call them the three R's. The first R happens to be, you have to reflect. Now it's easy to say, you just gotta reflect on a situation, but what you really need to do is you need to sit down and think about what just happened and why it happened. Instead of just reacting, cause that's the first thing that we're used to doing, what we really need to do is really reflect. What makes the reflection a lot harder is if I tell you just to sit down with all these emotions that are just going through your body. What does emotions mean? Energy in motion. So if I take you with all these emotions and tell you to sit down and just reflect on the situation, that's not gonna do you any good. Instead, what you can do is move your body. I, when I got that phone call, at first I wanted to react and get revenge. I actually made a couple phone calls to some people and I'm like, yo, we gotta, we gotta handle this situation. And they told me, Nate, you're, you, you can't do that. You, you got a lot going for yourself. And I'm like, I don't care what I have going for myself. That's my mother, she's in the hospital. But after I just started pacing back and forth and started to express myself, you see, not expressing myself just with anger and trying to get revenge, but expressing emotion, energy, emotion by just moving my body. So what you, the first thing you need to do is when you do reflection and you notice that you can't reflect on anything because you have all these emotions, go move your body. And then when you're done with that, you open up a journal or you have a big piece of paper in the room with markers all over your, you should have one of these in your office or even your bedroom if you have a small little room because this helps a lot. The first thing you do is you reflect and you write out on why do I feel this way? What happened? And one thing where you'll notice is what happened? Why do I feel this way? Is you'll come to one conclusion that most of the things that happen to us are out of our control. And when you start to realize that most of the things that happen to us is out of our control, you'll learn it's not about what happened. It's about how we react. The second step then comes in. You start to revise your plan. I started to revise. Whoa. There's only so much I can do. What's in my control? If I get revenge, what does that do to me and where I want, where I'm going in my life, what I want in my life? And the only thing I can control right now is how I react. Now, the only thing that I see around me is other family members not so sure what to do. And if I'm reacting this way, how's everybody else going to react, especially if I'm the one that everybody looks up to? Is this the way I should be carrying myself? No, it should not be the way I carry myself because how's that gonna help my mother by getting revenge? So when you start to reflect and you start to revise, your, the reflection helps you revise. That's what it ends up doing. The reflection helps you really sit there and go, nah, this ain't a good idea. Whoa, let me, let me chill a little bit. But like I said, if you have too much emotions, go express it. After you reflect and then you start to revise, then we can react. But there's a huge problem when it comes down to reacting when a person does not have this one key element in their life. Not having anything that you're looking forward to becoming in your life. Here's what I mean. If we do not create an image of a person that we're going to become, then we're easily going to react on the same way how we did in the past. So when I want, it happened to me, when I got that phone call, I went straight to the past and wanted to react like the old version of me. And then when I made phone calls, the people I was speaking to was reminding me of the person that I'm becoming. So all these emotions after reflecting and revising and reacting, one of the things that can be very hard is if we take that person and put them in an environment, like how I had to go see my mother in the hospital with un being unconscious, I still felt this past one to come back up. But I had to remind myself over and over and over again of where I'm going 
who I'm becoming. And this is the one thing that we miss out when we talk about how to have emotional intelligence or how to master your emotions is a simple fact that if you have trauma or you come up from a hard past like I did, it's extremely hard to control your emotions unless we understand the importance of self-image, of where we're going in life. And here's one of the reasons why it becomes really hard and you have to redo it and redo it and redo it in your mind. We have something called the conscious mind and then we have something called the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is everything that happens automatically. It controls about 92% of everything that we do, from breathing, to blinking, to the way we stand with our posture, etc. What happens with the conscious mind, it's around 8%. Now there's arguments that have this at 90 and this at 10, but let's just keep it at 8 and 92. If you have something that happens that happens to be negative, and a negative influence comes into the conscious mind and is negative, and that happens to remind you of a sensation, a feeling, a thought, or a perception of something from the past, the old you, that aligns right here with the subconscious mind. So if you never truly heal that part of you, or if you have, this is called a trigger by the way, if you never really truly healed that part, this negative activity that happened in your environment that was out of your control, that becomes conscious, easily triggers the subconscious, and then everything else from there, from your body, like your muscular system, your organs and glands, your emotions all react automatically. React, they react. You can't master your emotions until you learn on how to control the way you react. So the way that we have to change this is, if we do not remind ourselves when this negative activity comes from the environment, something that was out of our control, if we don't know how to flip the coin is what I call it. When something negative happens, flip the coin. When you have a negative thought, flip the coin. See the opposite side, find the silver lining. If you don't know how to do that, then we easily just let this come in. But if you do, do your three R's, you do your reflection, you do your revising, and you do your reaction based off those two to help you master your emotions, but then you go into an environment that happens to remind you of the old you now, those things won't work unless you continue to do repetition of who you're becoming, who you're becoming with your self image. When you do that, this negative activity that's coming into the conscious from the environment, we flip into a positive and we have to do this over and over and over again. The more we do this, the more we can get in to subconscious mind and then we are able to now subconsciously be able to master our emotions in environments, around people, and in anything that's out of our control. And if you continue to find yourself after using the three R's and using your self image of reminding yourself who you're gonna become in your life to help you overcome the things that trigger your emotions and that stop you from mastering your emotions, then the next step you need to do, my friend, is you need to understand the impact that trauma has on our nervous system. And you can do that by watching this video right here.